call this meeting of the uh, City of Salem Urban Renewal Agency to order. And we have guests this evening to lead us in the pre Pledge of Allegiance from Troop 150 in West Salem. Brendan Robertson and Ian Hertemp, come on down and take us through the Pledge of Allegiance. And thank you very much for being here this evening. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Oops, forgot to call the roll. <laughs> now we'll see who's here. So I know. I, Board Member Kayser. Present. Board Member Anderson. Likewise. Board Member Nanke. I am here. Board Member McCoy. Here. Board Member Osick. Here. Board Member Hoy. Here. Board Member Cook. Here. Board Member Lewis. Here. Chair Bennett. Here. Councilor McCoy. Additions and deletions? We have no additions or deletions. Okay. Right. Do you have anyone for public comment? No one, no one has signed up for public comment. Did anyone want to address the Urban Renewal Agency? All righty. And the consent calendar. I move appro approval of the consent calendar. Second. Go through it. Why don't you? At the minutes of the February 12th uh, Urban Renewal Agency meeting. Uh, under resolutions, we have uh, to adopt a resolution to transfer 320,000 of appropriation authority from the convention, convention Center Fund contingencies to the con Convention Center Fund Materials and Services. Um, we then have a series. We have a 4.2B, which adopts the resolution authorizing the Urban Renewal Agency to issue the issuance of a short-term bond in an amount not to exceed 13 million to pay for the cost of urban renewal projects in the North Gateway urban renewal area. 4.2C is issuing short-term bonds, bonds not to exceed 6.5 million to pay for cost uh, of urban renewal projects in the riverfront downtown urban renewal. 4.2D uh, is the same, issuing short-term bonds in the amount of 1.5 million for urban renewal projects in the Mill Creek Industrial Park. Urban Renewal Area 4.2E is issuance of short-term bonds in an amount to exceed one point, not to exceed 1.5 million to pay for cost of urban renewal projects in the McGillcrest Urban Renewal Area. Under a action items, uh, 4.3A is the authorized the use of 819,000 of dollars of North Gateway Urban Renewal Area funds to increase funding authority for a streetscape improvement project within the North Gateway Urban Renewal Area. Uh, 4.3B is um, approving the management agreement incentive fee calculation for the Salem Convention Center for the three-year period from July of 2017 through July of 2020. And that's just an extension of what's been in existence for quite some time. That is your consent calendar. Councillor Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just have one brief question, if I may. It didn't sure. rise to the level of pulling it. I just have a yeah. question. It's for Mr. Duncan, and I tried to get hold of him this afternoon, but um, he was out. Uh, I'm looking at uh, 4.2A, Casey, which is the transferring uh, money to the Salem Convention Center, which is, I'm all in favor of that, but I'm just curious about the facts and finding. It says, um, the over expenditure amount was not material in nature. I'm wondering what the definition of material is because as I look at that, 320,000 is getting close to 10% of three and a half million. Um, I think one thing you have to consider is that uh, for the, the expenditures that they're having, it's related to an increase in bookings. And so they're seeing a, a revenue on the That's upshot. a good thing. Yeah, that, that was not anticipated. And we ran into a situation last year uh, where we did not provide them sufficient authority um, for the expenditures that took place over the fiscal year. So this year we're trying to ensure that that, that doesn't take place. 
in that they've got the uh, authority needed to provide for the costs associated with the, the additional bookings and the success that they're having there. And I'll ask Kelly Jacobs if she has anything additional to add. Thank you very much. Will this appear then in the urban renewal budget? Uh, not this particular item, but this kind of cost overrun issue, will we see an increase in their, in the allocation in the budgeting process or how will that? Yes. Okay. And we'll ensure that uh, the, the appropriation authority is there and that's partly why uh, contingencies are available for uses ah, such okay. as this. So it'll show up under the contingency amount and then we'll take it up as it arrives, okay? Uh, I wanted to thank uh, the city manager and uh, I assume Mr. Fernandez for the explanation on 4.3A. I thought that was helpful. If I understood correctly, that's where we were talking about the uh, extension of the sewage line. And also Director Rutherford. Ah, there she is. Sorry. <laughs> Do you want to explain it just real quickly what's going on out there? I, I guess I was surprised to see uh, in it that there is uh, interest in development on the um, east side, I think, of the... Is that what's happening? Yeah, that's correct. That, that's part of the story here. The other part is that we do have the streetscape improvement project that's going to um, add some crossings and some signal interconnects as a part of this streetscape project. And then as we were developing the streetscape project, we discovered that there's a gap in sewer on Portland Road. At the same time that we're discovering this gap, we have interest in parcels uh, along Portland Road right. that would make use of that sewer. So that um, sewer infill project was added to the streetscape project. It, sewers sewer infill and utility work is identified as an objective within the plan. And so it made sense to add it to this so that it could help facilitate the new development in that area. So we're seeing pretty serious interest in that area up there. That is, that's kind of those woods up in there. That's right, the along creek. the creek there. Okay. Yeah. Good. Very good. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. The motion passes. Information reports. You want to inform us? Do you want to wait and see what she's going to inform us on, or do you want to start well, her off? Uh, uh, I don't know. It's up to you, Director <laughs> Rutherford, which way you want to go. We already had a conversation today, so she knows where my question is coming. So I presume I won't ask it, and you can we'll answer see if it. See she answers yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. There we go. It's a test. There we go. It's so a race to the mic here. <laughs> um, I don't like to lose those. I understand. <laughs> So we've continued to have open houses and obtain input into the streets, downtown streetscape improvement process. One of the questions that does come up periodically and which Councillor Anderson raised today is who makes the decision or who did make the decision that we would not be including the travel lanes on Liberty and commercial as a part of the streetscape process. So I would like to clarify that this is not a transportation system planning process. This is a streetscape process. I do know that uh, Director Fernandez has some information to add to this about prior work um, leading up to the streetscape project. Um, but the decision was made moving forward that to, to make any changes to those lane configurations would entail a transportation system planning update process. We also have the uh, downtown congestion study that's just kicking off to look at improving the traffic flow through downtown rather than uh, slowing down the traffic flow through downtown and you know how we can relieve that congestion. So as a part of the streetscape design process to be able to move forward with some of these improvements, the decision was made to not look at reducing these travel lanes as a part of this project, but to look at what we can do on, in the sidewalks and maybe in parking spaces so that we can move forward with improvements in a timely fashion rather than kind of slowing down everything until the transportation system planning work could occur. But I'll turn it over to you to talk about prior work. Yeah, just very briefly, Peter Fernandez, Public Works Director. Two years ago, we completed the downtown circulation study that looked at all of the streets in downtown. Uh, at that time, uh, the decision, and the council adopted that study, and at the time, we reduced the lanes on Commercial Street, 
I uh, went from four to three and did the shared bike lanes on both sides. Uh, that was the plan that gave us the church and high bike lanes where we reduced lanes there. Uh, that was the study that gave us the signal, recommended the signal at uh, Union and Commercial. So that work was done and there was extensive work done to look at that. And one of the things that we looked at was Liberty Street and, and the, the analysis showed that we could not afford to reduce lanes on Liberty Street. We could afford it on on Commercial Street, we could afford it on, on High and Church. By afford, I mean traffic congestion wise, but we simply didn't have the capacity. The, the throughput was just too big on Liberty Street to be able to recommend uh, any reductions there, but it was, it, we looked at it. Uh, there's more work coming from that study. Uh, there's a number of double left turns that are gonna be eliminated, uh, brought down to single left turns, which will make it safer for pedestrians. So, there, so we're still implementing uh, recommendations from that study. Uh, the the two weighing of, uh, uh, of state is, is a recommendation from that study. So there's still a lot of work to be done there, but I think, I think what happened here is that work was already done. That was already adopted by council. Work is, is, is being accomplished there. So, so the streetscape is really about what's happening on the sidewalk, not the, not the street system. What I, what I hear you saying, I think, uh, t just to make sure I understand it, is you're not foreclosing future discussion of changes on commercial liberty or any of the others. It just is gonna require uh, a more comprehensive process that includes uh, additional transportation studies if it's ever going to go that direction? Well, a comprehensive study was done okay. and was reviewed by, by, was put out to the citizens, was approved by the okay. council. If council wants to look at it again, then we can look at, I mean, sure. you know, we can always look at it again, but at this okay. point, that was just finished yeah. two years ago. I mean, we're, we're still doing improvements based on, okay. on, on those recommendations. Councilor Anderson. Thank you. Uh, I am interested, uh, Director Rutherford, in what you just said about commercial and liberty, because when you look at the actual document here, it just says um, travel lanes uh, narrowing downtown streets, which to me implied everything, all streets downtown, but what you're saying, it's commercial and liberty, which are the state highways, and also I would guess Marion and Center, which go to the bridges. Those are the ones that we really have the problems with, not as much with the other east, west, west and north, south streets. So I would add trade and ferry and front to the list. We're getting pretty much all of them now, aren't we? <laughs> um, however, we are, uh, we are leading into the streetscape project and it's kind of on hold right now until we complete the, divine, the design elements, it's to two-way Court Street and State Street. So those are still on the topic for discussion, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other, anything else you wanna highlight? Okay. Okay, very good. That appears to have completed the agenda. We are adjourned, okay? <clears throat> Call this meeting of the Salem City Council for March 12th to order. Uh, if you'll please call the roll. Councilor Kayser. Councilor Anderson. Likewise. Councilor Nanke. Here. Councilor McCoy. Here. Councilor Osick. Here. Councilor Hoy. Here. Councilor Cook. Here. Councilor Lewis. Here. Mayor Bennett. Here. Okay, I have a proclamation. I want to invite up uh, Don Gunther from Public Works. There he is. Uh, Don has been. Uh, Don's been part of the city's tree crew for almost 18 years, mm. and the lead tree trimmer. If you all want to know who trims the trees, <laughs> we now know who Don is. And Don is on the board of the Oregon Community Trees Advisory Panel for Oregon Department of Forestry's Urban Forestry Assistance Program. So we asked him to receive the proclamation uh, on cherry trees. And let me just read that. Uh, Whereas the cherry tree is an essential part of the city of Salem's history, culture, environment, and economy, and whereas Salem's first cherry festival was held in 1903 with a three-day celebration, and whereas in 1907, 
the Pacific Coast Association of Nurserymen adopted a resolution declaring Salem to have the greatest and finest display of cherries known in history. <coughs> Whoa. And they're out now. And whereas in 1913, the Salem Cherians organization was established to host an annual Blossom Day, and whereas in 1986 the city of Salem and Kawagoe City, Japan entered into a sister city relationship to strengthen the bonds between our cities, and whereas in 1992 more than 150 Akabono flowering cherry trees were planted on the Capitol Mall, and whereas in 2017 Oregon's Legislative Assembly adopted Senate Bill 146 designating the third Saturday in March as Cherry Blossom Day and whereas residents and visitors enjoy strolling under the cherry trees in the Capitol Mall admiring the blossoms and observing the history recorded on the stone pavers now therefore I Chuck Bennett Mayor of the City of Salem hereby proclaim March 17th it's this Saturday, 2018, to be Cherry Blossom Day in Salem and encourage all residents and visitors to join in its observance dated this 12th day of March, 2018. Thank you very much. And I, I really do want to be sure people are aware that there will be a celebration. Don will tell you about it. Uh, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Before he prunes them, he's <laughs> Actually, I don't know anything about the celebration. I apologize. I would like to say, though, that showcasing the cherry tree is, I think, a great way to recognize trees for the important role that they do play in the life of this community. So on behalf of Parks Operations and the tree section, I do gladly accept this proclamation. So. Great. Thank you very much. Give me a motion on additions and deletions. Yeah. I move appro approval of the uh, additions to the agenda. We have one addition, and that is uh, an added information report, 18-125. Uh, it's a planning and administrator decision. Okay. In discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. And now for council and city manager comments. Councillor McCoy. Uh, I serve on the uh, police facility sort of council. Microphone. Microphone. Oh. I'd like to say it again. Really? Uh, <laughs> uh, I've been requested by uh, Deputy Chief Belshaw to remind folks of a couple items that are coming up on the uh, Friday. police facility uh, here soon on March 16th there's a demo uh, demolition day and you can watch that on the corner of division northeast corner of division commercial starting at 10 a.m. and on March 21st at 6 p.m. there's a town hall meeting on police facility uh, at Broadway Commons and they're looking for feedback on the design concepts great now that uh, that demolition day is that the one where the chief shows up with a cat and starts. <laughs> is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> chief is chief, nodding. Do you yes. want to comment on your. Uh, with a big smile on his face, yeah. <laughs> Got the new nickname. Show with the sledgehammer. Evening, Mayor and <clears throat> Council. Uh, Jerry Moore, Chief of Police. Well, I, um, I'm told I'm going to be having bulldozer lessons on Thursday for Friday's event, so I'm not really sure what's going to happen, but uh, it should be entertaining. Uh, we're, we're really excited, as you may guess. As you go by, you can actually see some activity occurring on the site, so um, a lot of excitement, and we're looking forward to taking the building down and putting up a new one. Great. Are there any surprises yet on what you're finding as you take it down? Well, I think um, <clears throat> the folks that were uh, the public works or the uh, engineers uh, had a pretty good idea of what was going to be in there originally and, and that's come to fruition. Right. But I think maybe once we get into the ground we might find more. So uh, I will hope we don't, but uh, uh, I think things are going along very well. Great. 
Well, thank you. We'll look forward to seeing you in the driver's seat. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Councillor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, sticking with the theme of trees, on March the 2nd, I was really pleased to be able to attend a lecture at Laux Auditorium by Dr. Kathy Wolf on the connection between trees and health. And then, uh, so there was a very informative uh, talk about uh, the connection between people's health and, and having uh, viable trees within a city. And along those lines, I want to remind everybody that on April the 7th, from 9 to 1, the Friends of Trees will be planting out in Ward 6 at Weathers Park. I encourage you all to show up. It's a great event. If you've never been to the Friends of Trees event, it's a lot of fun. It's educational. You learn uh, the ins and outs of planting a tree and you get to give back a little to the city uh, in the way of planting something that will be there for a long time. So I would encourage you all to be there. I will be there. Uh, it will be my, I think, fifth Friends of Trees event. It's a lot of fun. And uh, also, I was pleased to welcome you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, uh, mem uh, many members of the staff out toward 6 on March the 8th for the latest of the Bridging the Gap events, Town Hall. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All righty. Very good. Well, I already jumped the, jumped the gun and did the proclamation. So we will go to public comment from Mr. Evan White. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mayor Bennett and Councilors. Thank you for your service. My name is Evan White and I live in Ward 7, not far from Shirley School in Sprague High. I'm Bland Use Chair of the Sunny Slope Neighborhood Association. And I'm here to speak briefly in favor of the motion made by Councilor Cook, which would greatly improve bicycle and pedestrian connectivity between our neighborhood and our friends in the Southwest Association of Neighbors. This co the so-called uh, cemetery trail is adjacent to Belcrest Cemetery. It does not go through the cemetery. It goes through the woods next to the cemetery and provides a way for us to walk or bike to Candelaria and Laurel Springs and prepare to get very muddy at this time of year. I go to a number of downtown meetings most every week, and one of my greatest fears is I'll be driving home at night along South Liberty where there are no bike uh, paths, and it'll be dark and rainy, and it will be my bad luck to suddenly encounter a bicyclist wearing dark clothing with no red tail light and probably no bike helmet either. We must find safer ways to get around town for those who cannot afford to own a car. Generations and generations of future Salem residents will thank you for your foresight in voting in favor of Councillor Cook's motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much, Mr. White. Is there anyone else that wanted to address the council tonight? All righty. Thank you. Consent calendar. Mr. Mayor, I move approval of the consent calendar with the fault one poll. Uh, item 3.2A by Councilor Kayser. Second. Okay, you want to run through what we're. Sure. We've got the minutes of the uh, February 26th City Council meet meeting. Uh, under uh, action items 3.3A. Uh, uh, we're authorizing the city manager to execute an attached purchase and sale agreement to acquire real property located at 4493 Hayesville Drive Northeast. And this is to purchase uh, a site to build a new pump station for one that's failed. 3.3B uh, is a subordination of a home investment partnership single family uh, rehabilitate deferred payment loan for a property located at 1350 Peace Street Southeast. This uh, basically means we're going to, um, it's over $20,000, under $20,000, the city manager can take care of this, over $20,000, council has to approve basically taking a, uh, a second, uh, being number two in line if something happens uh, on this loan. It was a $20,000 loan to help them uh, improve the property. Um, uh, what this will do, the city's at no risk, is if once the home is sold, we'll recover our money. Uh, and the loan will be repaid. That is it. 
Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Okay. All righty. Who, what do we got here? Councilor Cook, do you have a motion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I would move that council direct staff to present the council with a resolution initiating amendments to the Salem Transportation Systems Plan and Comprehensive Park Systems Master Plan to add additional trail connection between Dogwood Street Southeast and Croyson Scenic Trail and upon adoption of the master plan amendments, direct staff to acquire the additional sections through land use conditions or direct negotiations. Second. Any discussion? Councilor? I uh, fully support this amendment and I appreciate the support of council with this at all as well. Uh, ward 7 is a wonderful, beautiful ward, but as far as access and um, transportation for pedestrians and bicyclists, it's extremely difficult because of the hills, uh, because of the way development has happened within the ward. So this trail system is an integral part. Um, I would say that if the arterials and the streets are like our circulation system, Ward 7 could do with some better cardiac health and prevention. And this is part of keeping that circulation flowing and keeping our, um, the people in Ward 7 with a high quality of life and, and good livability. So I'd appreciate your vote on this. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Okay, 5.2B, let's see. I move that staff review Salem Revised Code Section 94.195, Possession of Alcoholic Beverages in Parks, and return to council with a recommendation regarding whether to allow beverages with over 14% alcohol in Salem's parks during permitted events. Second. Second by Hoy? Lewis. Oh, by Lewis, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to see if the cop would go for it. Yeah. Uh, as, you, uh, as you know from the uh, written discussion, uh, this is an opportunity for us to take a look at extending the availability of, uh, of spirits uh, during uh, events where licensed and permitted uses are underway. Uh, it uh, goes with a batch of other uh, activities that go on in the parks. Um, and this is, uh, will give us a chance to have a public hearing on this issue and have a discussion of it. Uh, we currently allow wine and beer sales. This would add spirits to that list. Yes. Uh, I have some concerns that I would want to make sure that staff is included in that. If that would be all right, Mr. Mayor, to have some discussion or would that be? Oh, it, yeah, whatever okay. you'd like to do. I think the, the main thing is whether, if you could discuss whether to have staff return to us rather than debate the, the underlying issue, if that's Absolutely. okay? Absolutely, yes, okay. thank you. Um, I would want to make sure that the staff report includes law enforcement data around any extra shifts or staffing that are required around current permitted events. Yeah. Um, also, uh, data as far as medical, so not just police, but fire with calls mm -hmm. medically to some of these events where alcohol is already permitted. Uh, I would also like to see that impact on the budget as far as staffing is concerned. And um, additional data from within our community, because this is a systemic change that could impact the community as a mm -hmm. whole, just information in general about minors in possession um, or about citations with noncompliance for licensed OLCC um, vendors or events, just, just that kind of stuff, wanting to make sure we have a full picture. And I would also request that I understand we have a time constraint on this wanting to move forward but that we make sure to give community partners enough time to be able to respond as we're concurrently having the discussion about sobering facilities in the area yeah thank I think you. that makes sense yes Councilor Kayser thank you just a brief comment I've already you know this hit the paper today as an article we've received multiple emails about it um, as staff study this, I think it would be important to have some component of public education about what it is we're actually studying. Doing. <laughs> because there's, a, there's confusion already among the public about 
we're just gonna have alcohol for sale all the time in all the parks and it's just so there's already misinformation out there about yeah what it and is. there will continue to be misinformation I'm sure but let's let's sort of clarify briefly what it is we're talking about we're talking about events that already occur sort of the bite and brew and and uh, I think the skating rink served beer and wine and others and this would add no. <laughs> get it your hand. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Did you want to? Uh, well. Did you did you overdo it at the skating rink? No. What are you up to? <laughs> I think that if we're if this is a testimonial, we can. I think if we're having a discussion about social availability and norming within our community, that we make sure that we're being data driven. As Councillor yeah. Kayser said, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and yeah. within our own cultural norms, there are some pervasive myths as well. So I would welcome, I mean, I understand it's not staff's responsibility to reach out to the hospital to look at alcohol-related injuries and how they may uh, ever flow given the season. We're right around St. Patrick's Day where I know staffing oh, can he, ramp up for certain events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As the only injured party during the opening of the rink, I don't drink, so that was just on me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ended up on my head, I don't just so that doesn't get counted, I guess. <laughs> Uh, this is, uh, I think it, it's mainly uh, an opportunity, and I agree with you, I don't disagree with you at all. Uh, this is not to open our parks to being allowed to bring beer or wine or spirits to our parks. That is not allowed under, and this that will not be changed. This is the events where we have OLCC licensed uh, vendors uh, in a controlled environment uh, being able to uh, provide one additional uh, service. So, but I think we need to explore all of that. I think you make a very good point. Thank I you. have absolutely no disagreement. Okay, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Okay. And we're to information reports. No. The, no, poll. No. No. the poll. The poll. Councillor Kayser, you are going to treat us to this one. I am. I move staff recommendation. Second. Second by Hoy. Discussion? I really just wanted to pull this just to highlight all the work that staff has done on this State Street Corridor study. I've been following this since before I was on the council. It's been going on for, I think, over two years. Um, it's one of the, the best public outreach efforts I think I've seen the city conduct. There have been um, dozens of people that have attended the public meetings. There's been, there's a website, there's been surveys, there's been canvassing, outreach to the businesses. It's, it's really a model for how this process should work when we're undertaking large planning issues. And I just really wanted to say kudos um, to, to Eunice and to Lisa and, and Norm and everybody kind of on the staff with this. So I'm really excited this is going forward um, and I completely support it. And uh, yeah, just wanted to highlight that. Great, thank you very much. This, uh, this was uh, uh, an effort I started uh, as the, when I was on the city council, uh, along with Councillor Anderson to get this going. And I think we're both really proud of the work that was done by, by uh, uh, Lisa and Eunice and the whole planning staff. It, you really, I think, highlighted what a model this was of how this can be done. Councillor Anderson. I agree with what both the mayor and Councilor Kayser said, and I do have um, much uh, congratulations to, I'm going to say, Lisa Anderson Ogilvie and Eunice Kim, so we can get their last names here, who did a terrific job here. Um, and I look forward to a further discussion of this, even though we have had discussion, it's mostly been neighbors on either side and people who are immediately directly affected, but I'd like to also hope we can hear from the greater public. And along those lines, I'm looking at section two of the resolution, which talks about um, a public hearing before the Planning Commission on recommendations, and I would also like to see a public hearing before this body after the Planning Commission. Commission, excuse me, and I don't know then, Mr. City Attorney, if I need to make an amendment to that resolution, or can I just say we want to have one, or what's going to happen? Um, staff can can bring that back as a public hearing, or when it comes to you for a decision, you can elect to schedule okay. a public hearing. Okay. Well, so I won't make anything right now, but I, I will I will tell you that I will ask for a public hearing, and I hope staff does too, so we can council can hear it as a whole as well as just the planning commission. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I certainly hope we get to hear this because I think it's that important. This is, uh, 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 Mr. Fernandez mentioned the two-waying of State Street and I viewed this as part of that effort uh, too to complete that project. I've spent 10 years on the council and gotten two blocks worth of two-waying done so uh, Mr. Fernandez has assured me someday, someday, We'll be able to drive like we used to, drive free here in Salem, both directions. Ex 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 Mayor, if I may, uh, we cannot we cannot two way across the railroad tracks, or we'll lose the quiet zone. So but we'll be so close. So well, Fernando, everything can be two way except short. except that block. And I wanted that quiet zone for ten years, so it's like I got in my own way, didn't I? I guess. Okay. Well. Uh, very good. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Information reports? Anything? Okay. We have no first readings. We have a second. Oops. I'm sorry. Um, I just have a, I don't know if it's a comment or a question on the planning decision it doesn't have an item but i think that's coming under information reports that is the um a, a, uh, addition to the agenda tonight yes um I, I, i'm just a couple questions i guess my first one is i'm just sort of curious as to why this decision was announced march 12th which is today and it's coming to the council three hours later so i don't have any time to review this and i know anybody else doesn't and so how can I make any decision if I might want to call it up or might want to look at it? So is there some sort of time-based issue here that, that a decision had to be made by today? And as opposed to putting this on the agenda for two weeks from now? That's Ms. my Anderson first question. Ogilvy, you want to fill us in? Hi, Lisa Anderson, will be your planning administrator. We're just worried about the 120 days we took a lot of time to work on the conditions, and now that we have them right, we think with this decision, we wanted to get it on the agenda and move it forward so that way if it's called up or it's appealed, you would actually have time to have a public hearing before the 120 days expire. Oh, okay, but what we have been given from when we got this, I got this when I showed up here, so. Would you, you like know, to call it up, Councilor? Well, I don't know that I would, but it's, it's less than an hour we've had to, to look at this, so. Is there, what happens if we, uh, if we just postpone this for two weeks, is that going to run into the 120 day issue? I think she's saying it could, is yeah. that what you're saying? If I can uh, address that, there's two different issues. One's the 120 day is, is runs out in May 17th. So the, there's a potential that we wouldn't have time to have a full hearing. The other issue is the council rule says you've got to the first regular meeting to call it up. So this is your opportunity. Uh, I know, I know that second rule. Okay, then if I can ask a couple other questions that sure. might help me make my decision. Uh, I hesitate to use wor the words perused and scan again like I used last, me last meeting, but how is this connected to the Lone Oak Bridge situation and how is it connected to the Berndt property that uh, uh, we moved toward establishing a special reimbursement district and now we postponed, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at that again. So how does this connect? So this property is just south of the burnt property. It's not currently inside the city limits. So this is their first step before they come forward for annexation. It has a condition that they have to build, re build Lone Oak down to Reese Hill and pay into the reimbursement district unless the district doesn't exist. And are these folks in at the 100% level as opposed to the 50 or the 25%? Correct. Because they're on Lone Oak Road. Lone Oak will go through their property, yes. I'm not going to call it up, but because of okay. what you just said uh, in terms of it's related to the Lone Oak Reimbursement District, and those are decisions we're going to have to face anyway, whether or not this particular piece uh, is in it now or, or later, because whatever we do is going to affect this. Okay, very good. Yes. Just a clarifying question, I guess, and if I can't ask it, let me know. But if we, at our next meeting, we're hearing about Lone Oak again, and that decision is overturned, how does that affect these land use decisions that are going forward now? 
Um, the conditions for, for this particular decision and the Barents modification, which was on your agenda last meeting, um, both tried to anticipate uh, that alternative. If the district were to go away, um, the, improve, the, the requirement to build the improvement is still there, and the, the condition provides that they can you know, pay a fee in lieu towards, towards constructing portion of the improvements as well as building the southern extension of Lone Oak. Is everybody okay? All righty. All those in favor of not doing nothing will go on ahead. Very good choice. Okay. Let's go to the second reading then. Ordinance Bill Number 2-18, an ordinance declaring certain territory located at 5500 block of Skyline Road South, annexed to the City of Salem prescribing zoning and withdrawing the territory from the Salem Suburban Rural Fire Protection District. Councilor Kayser? Aye. Councilor Anderson? Aye. Councilor Nanke? Aye. Councilor McCoy? Aye. Councilor Osick? Aye. Councilor Hoy? Aye. Councilor Cook? Aye. Councilor Lewis? Aye. Mayor Bennett? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Okay, this is our last chance for public comment. Does anyone want to address the council? Okay, then we are adjourned. Yeah. 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 Yeah.